Do you ever have the feeling that it doesn't matter who's in power, or who you vote for, or even what public opinion on issues are? The culture of the entire Western world always seems to be moving in a left-wing direction. Have you ever wondered why opinions that were commonplace and centrist just a few years ago are now considered far-right and extreme? Well, if you want to know why that keeps happening, look no further than this man. This is Bill Maher. He's the host of one of the most influential political talk shows in America that's been running for over 20 years. He's a liberal, he's a democrat, and he's not too fond of red America. He hates your religion and thinks you're fools for believing in it. But, you know, all religions, in my view, are stupid and dangerous. Well, He does series-long gags breaking down America's dumbest states, regularly mocking rural, religious, conservative areas as ignorant, uneducated, inbred, superstitious morons. Bradley Byrne is going to have to make this <laughs> The record clearly shows I dropped out of high school on account of the baby I made with my sister. And I believe if Jesus didn't love America, he wouldn't have written the Constitution. And I believe the true cause of homosexuality is book learning. He thinks abortion might be murder, but is still very pro-choice. They think it's murder, and it kind of is. I'm just okay with that. I am. I, I mean, there's 8 billion people in the world. I'm sorry, we won't miss you. He thinks the demographic replacement of white people is something to be celebrated and is proud of any part he played in it. Well, first of all, London was like all white. Yeah. Yeah, it was. You know, so can we just celebrate that victory that we made a place more diverse and not, you know, like... <laughs> he laughs at and mocks conservatives who exactly predict what's coming down the line. Green. To say that men can menstruate is a lie, and that is now, that is what is said. Yeah, wait, 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 where did that I, I never wait, said You never heard it, right, okay. Check it out, folks, check it out. He wished a recession on America that would ruin the lives of millions just so the big bad orange man might lose the next election. I feel like the bottom has to fall out at some point, and by the way, I'm hoping for it, because I think one way you get rid of Trump is a crashing economy, yeah. so please, bring on the recession. Yeah. Sorry if that hurts people, but it's either root for a recession or you lose your democracy. Trump, Trump. Speaking of Trump, he hates him with a visceral passion and takes every opportunity possible to attack him. He might be the only mainstream pundit who still peddles the Russiagate narrative. Russia collusion, what was that if not denying the election? They made up a story, which was a hoax. Well, it wasn't not, a hoax. Yeah, it was. It well, just true. what wasn't true? What part the of The Russia it? collusion, the idea that... There the, was collusion with the, Russia. The, uh, the idea there that was the, absolute collusion did, with Russia. Is that why he won the election, do you think? Partly. He even admits he called other pre-Trump Republicans evil when they weren't just because it would benefit his side. Liberals made a big mistake because we attacked your boy Bush like he was the end of the world, and he wasn't. And Mitt Romney, we attacked that way. I gave Obama a million dollars to throw freighter Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney wouldn't have changed my life that much, or yours, no, absolutely or John McCain. They were honorable men who we disagreed with, and we should have kept it that way. So we cried wolf, and that was wrong. But this is real. Yeah. Once fascists get power, they don't give it up. You've got Preach. President Trump for life. <laughs> so to summarize, he's a God-hating, abortion-loving, small-town-mocking, white-replacement-supporting, TDS-suffering, everyone's a Nazi-spouting, pot-smoking, partisan liberal Democrat. And mainstream conservatives love him. They can't get enough of this guy. They will go on his shows to be punching bags. They will relentlessly share his clips when he says something even moderately sane and praise him as one of the good liberals, despite him being vehemently against almost everything they claim to believe in. But it's not just Bill who gets this special treatment. Basically, any liberal who takes any position that is contrary to the ever leftward shifting mainstream is heralded as a wise and informed ally of conservatism. In recent months alone, we've seen staunch left-wingers who wouldn't support a Republican or Conservative if they had a gun to their head, like Maher, Jon Stewart, Charlemagne the God, be showered with praise and adoration. And the only purpose they and their ilk will ever serve is pushing the Conservative movement further left. But why does this keep happening? Why do Conservatives keep allowing their movement to be subverted? Well, this phenomenon can be perfectly summed up by a statement made by former US President Ronald Reagan way back in the 1960s. And that is, I didn't leave the Democratic Party, the Democratic Party left me. 
This sentiment and many others like it, such as, I didn't leave the left, the left left me, or the left is no longer liberal, or one of the most popular slogans of the 2015-2016 era, the left is no longer progressive, they're the regressive left. All of these sentiments have been uttered by aging left-wingers for decades now. Conservatives in turn greet these left-wingers with praise, adoration and celebration because for many conservatives, this is the exact same thing that happened to them. They incorrectly quote Churchill and say things like, if you're not a liberal before you're 30, you have no heart. If you're not a conservative after you're 30, you have no brain. They welcome the former liberals into the movement with open arms and give them an instant seat at the top table of right-wing thought. And some of you may be thinking, well, how does that lead to the right wing being subverted? Surely it strengthens the right to have former left wingers join them. Well, no. And the reason for that is quite simple. When someone espouses sentiments such as, I didn't leave the left, the left left me, or the left is no longer liberal, what they're actually doing is admitting zero errors of judgment, philosophy, or even action on their own part. In essence, what they're saying is their entire tenure of being a liberal progressive and opposing conservatism at every turn was 100% correct. Everyone else just went crazy. They have changed no beliefs, they have admitted no fault, had no repentance and apologized for nothing. They are basically saying that the place that the left is now that has gone too far or is no longer liberal, well that happened entirely independent of everything that came before it. It just happened magically by itself. It isn't that their ideology is reaching its natural conclusion and their years of preaching and supporting it led it to this crazy place. It's that they were right the whole time and their rapid revolutionary reshaping of society, well that should have all just naturally stopped when it came to finally reshaping something that was sacred to them and that they didn't want changed. Let me ask you something. If the rule you followed, Roger to this, of what use was the rule? I mean, it's not like generations of liberals promoting multiculturalism would lead to your own culture being supplanted and an atomized, ghettoized, unrecognizable society would emerge. It's not like generations of promoting the kind of feminism that denies biological factors and the different outcomes for men and women would lead to a breakdown in sex category so now that it's considered taboo to state that biological differences between men and women exist. It's not like generations of mocking and belittling the religious history and moral foundations of your society would lead to a collapse in morality and objective standards where they're now even trying to make minor attracted persons into a protected class and whether or not children should be sterilized is considered a real moral quandary. It's not like generations of demonizing white European people as slave owners, racists, colonizers and oppressors of a unique evil would lead to an open anti-white discrimination being written into law under the guise of affirmative action and die legislation with self-hatred and collective guilt being promoted in all aspects of society. Nope, all of this just happened by itself and the decades of societal transformation these former liberals championed had nothing to do with it. This is like someone lighting a building on fire and then when the whole street burns down, they look at it and say, well, that's got nothing to do with me because I only set one building on fire. This produces a pattern that brilliant American commentator Aaron McIntyre called the neocon cycle in an excellent video that I've linked below, where the young, more radical leftists replace the older revolutionaries and these older lefties, well, they become the new conservatives or neocons, effectively shifting the right wing to the left. So when the left moves more left wing, in response, the right moves more left wing too. This cycle repeats in perpetuity and society drifts further leftward. If you want proof, just look at what constitutes right wing political values today. I mean, Donald Trump is framed as if he's the most far right figure imaginable, but he's nothing more than a 1990s Democrat. In 2008, Obama, who was seen as a liberal standard bearer, was elected president by being very explicitly against gay marriage. What I believe is, is that marriage is between a man and a woman. I believe that marriage uh, is the union between a man and a woman. But the supposedly far-right Donald Trump was bragging about how he was the most pro-LGBT president ever. You should hear what Obama had to say about illegal immigration in 2008. We can't tolerate a situation where people come to the United States in violation of the law. Nor can we tolerate employers who exploit undocumented workers in order to drive down wages. And that's why we're taking steps to strengthen border security. For those who wish to become citizens, we should require them to pay a penalty and pay taxes, learn English, go to the back of the line behind those who played by the rules. These were perfectly normal positions to hold for what was considered a very liberal president. But today, 
Joe Biden is forced to apologize publicly because he called a murderer an illegal immigrant instead of undocumented. Look at how Britain has had 13 years of conservative government and it has seen an unprecedented crackdown in hate speech where having offensive stickers gets you thrown in jail for years. Britain has also seen record levels of immigration. It's fired the only politician who seemed to want to actually do something about it. Their police kneel for BLM. They paint their police cars in rainbow flags. And the people who accurately predicted any elements of this are made the boogeyman of history. My own country of Ireland had a perfect example of this too recently, when a grassroots movement made of ordinary people halted the seemingly unstoppable runaway train of liberal progressivism in Ireland. With a landslide victory in two referendums, despite the fact that every single mainstream political party, bar one, the NGO establishment and the media were all against them. But what did we see in the aftermath of this political earthquake that even caused the Prime Minister to step down? Well, the leader of the one party that was against the referendums is calling for an end to the culture wars and a return to business as usual. Despite the fact the culture war is the only thing the right wing in the country is winning and the only reason these referendums were defeated. We have talking heads on national television pushing the same old progressive liberalism that led us here in the first place. And they shudder with fear and revulsion at the idea that Ireland might be becoming slightly more conservative. And there's a, see, there's and a swing back then. Do no, you think, I don't. Or a fight back to some to a more conservative Ireland no. because the sense was we've no. become more. And no, more not at all. And I was at a business networking meeting this morning for women, and and professional women were saying to me there, "Of course, I voted no." I mean, I was with progressive upper class career women, and they were against the referendum too. So that means it's okay. People in the dissident right were unironically sharing this clip and showering with praise despite the fact she's saying that support of the working classes who made all of this possible is literally beneath her. All of this isn't to say that people can't change. Thomas Sowell was a Marxist in his youth and is now one of the most celebrated American conservative and libertarian thinkers of the last century. British conservative thinker and icon Peter Hitchens was a Trotskyist in his youth. But the key element to these changes is that they admitted fault and rejected their old ideology. The older liberals like Bill Maher or Jon Stewart, well they make no such admissions. They lament the way the world is while acknowledging no fault in the fact that theirs was the dominant ideology that led us here. The anti-establishment right have got to see these people for what they really are. They hated, mocked and belittled you in the past and the fact that you agree now on certain things isn't because they've moved to the right, it's that society has unconsciously moved you to the left. So if any anti-establishment right-wing movement in any Western country wants any sort of chance at affecting real change, then you're going to have to make sure you understand without any uncertainty what you believe and why you believe it. If you find your political North Star and follow that without wavering, it won't matter how many fashionable, high-status, high-profile individuals try to co-op your movement and water down your message. They won't be able to. And this will be because you know who you are, what you believe and why you believe it fully in possession of the knowledge that no matter how well-meaning they may seem, the Liberals will not save you. You've got to save yourself.